Hello, everyone. Welcome to our episode number two. This is uh, Grow Your Waxing <laughs> Business with St. Brazil Waxes. This is our special guest today is Dana Baird. She is in the beautiful country, county, whatever, of Colorado. We're just going to put that yes. here. Um, but Dana, just tell us a little bit about you, your business, how you got started, and now your focus is brows. I know you're branching over into the hydrofacial world, but brows is really what I know you for. Yeah, absolutely. So I've been in and out of the industry for 10 years. Um, I kept finding that, you know, I'd leave it, come back to it, leave it, come back to it. And finally, um, you know, an opportunity opened up with a company uh, and I took it and I realized that my love for brows really was shining. And, um, you know, from there, everything kind of evolved. Um, one day I just decided I had a child and retail hours are really hard when you're a mother. Um, and so I decided to branch out on my own, really take the step and the leap to create something for myself and for my family. Um, and from then on, you know, little by little, just started building my clientele using, you know, Instagram and word of mouth as a way to build my business. And then uh, I was, you know, in and out of using all these different waxes and playing with, you know, different brands, honey waxes, pearl waxes, and I really wasn't finding anything that I truly loved. And one of my colleagues actually had mentioned you and said, why don't you go, you know, check her page out on Facebook and see, see what she has. And, and so I said, okay, I'll do that. So I logged on, you know, and I'm filling out all the information and, and then you start posting about this latte wax. And it was like, ding, light bulb, you know, and uh, that's how I found you. And it's all just blossomed from there. Wow. So now what made you decide to really focus on brows? Did you do the whole, let me do full body waxing and then kind of go to the money makers and then yeah. say, yep, I just want a face. Is that really how it you worked? You know, for me, it was more so finding my strong suit, finding what I was really good at. Um, and it took me a better part of five years to kind of come to that realization of like, wow, I really am not that great at body waxing. And I'm really good at brows. And so I decided to go with that direction and focus on that. And I think that brows are something that are so important and can make such a huge statement for somebody, but it's such a small step. Yep. Yep. And so for your yeah. clients, cause you started off and did the traditional, you had a very small space and then we've seen you grow yes. very quickly. Yeah. You have employees now. I mean, you're training yeah. them. Like, did you yeah. ever see yourself doing that with waxing or was it more, you know, let me just kind of get my, get my money, stay where I am. You know, I still have my child. Like, how did you make always, the decision? Yeah. I always had a vision. Um, going into this, you know, my husband and I, I'd always bounce ideas off of him. Like, you know, what do you think of this? And I remember, you know, being three months post baby, sitting on my couch, drawing up a logo for this idea that I had. And I always knew that I wanted to grow and I wanted to share with everybody what I knew and what over the years that I had come to learn, because we're always evolving, we're always growing. Right. And I think that's the beauty in this industry. And so for me, um, you know, that that's kind of, where that was at, um, going that direction. And so when you decided to say, you know what, I can't touch every face, I'm gonna have to yeah. bring someone in. How scary was that? Like, did you really take a long time to work your way up to bringing someone or were you like, yep, I can't do it anymore. I don't wanna, you know, mess up the balance I have. Cause I think that's the most difficult part as an esthetician is the letting go. Because as a solo, when you make that transition to, you know, becoming an employer, it changes the way you look at your business because now your baby is now kind of, you're letting other people touch your clients. Like, how did you right. get to that point? Well, just like you were saying, you know, I think it's really hard as a business owner, you want to build a brand and you want to build a reputation and you really have to find people that are willing to work hard for you. Um, and I did, I took my time with that. Um, that was something that I definitely thought long and hard about. 
Um, and of course I've got great support behind me. My husband's always pushing me to be the best that I can be. And he said, do it. What do you have to lose? You know, and here I'm thinking like, well, a lot, but <laughs> you know, yep. it, it has to be that way in order to have a life work balance, you have to be willing to take risks. And as a business owner, you have to be willing to kind of step out of your comfort zone. Because if you're, if you're not allowing yourself to open up to other opportunities, you're going to sell yourself short of, of your ability. Um, so it took me a while to find, you know, reliable people, you know, who would show up when, you know, to be prepared, to be cleanly. Um, right now I'm training a lovely gal, Riley, and she is a spitting image of myself. Oh my. She's really hardworking um, and she's so much fun to train. You know, you give her direction and she takes it and she leaps and she bounds with it. And I know she's going to do so great in this industry. So it's all about being consistent, providing quality service and ensuring that your employees also provide in quality service as well. Um, because ultimately it is your name on that brand. Absolutely. So what's the biggest takeaway that you've taken from really saying, okay, I'm going to do brows. I'm going to build my business with brows and then I'm going to watch it blossom. And then I'm going to be very consistent. Cause I find with you, Dana, you're very consistent. You do the same thing. You give people the same service. Um, yeah. And a lot of people, you know, when they are, especially waxing, I find that people get so freaked out if they have something that they've never seen before. Like someone comes in and they never have had a brow wax before versus yeah. someone who has gone to a different person. They didn't like the person, but they kind of wax every now and then. Like, how do you really keep that um, same kind of level of service for every single person that walks into your door and really give them the same amount of service so that they again come back like that's that's the most challenging i think for most people is how do you keep that up but not get overwhelmed with someone who comes in and looks like you know they've never gotten waxed like how do you do that well for starters when my clients walk in new established or new to me um, it's really important that they feel like this is home that they feel an open door policy that really, yes, I'm, I'm the professional here, but ultimately they're your brows. And I always tell my clients, you have to let me know how you love them. If you do, if you don't, because if you don't give me feedback, I don't know how to take your brows in the next direction. Oh, wow. I'm an open book. Um, you know, if you love something, great. If you don't, we'll fix it. Um, so for me, it's about sitting the client down, getting to know their lifestyle, you know, are they, are they makeup wearers? Do they not wear makeup? Are they active? Uh, you know, are they CEOs of companies? You know, do they stay at home with their children? Um, it's really about getting to know lifestyle for me. So I want to tap on that a little bit. And then I ask them, what do you love about your brows? What's one thing you want to change about your brows? And that opens up the floor to so many different avenues. And from there, I sit down, I have them lay in the bed, we do a consultation, very thorough, and we show them, this is what I see for your brow. And, and when I tell them, this is what I see for your brow, I'm not just talking about that one appointment. I'm talking six months from now. Oh, We're wow. talking, this is a commitment. This is for me, you know, my slogan is patience, beautiful brows take time and they take time because it's not a one shot deal. You know, most of the clients that come to me have had a bad wax. They've had a bad brow experience and, and I want to change that for them. I want them to come in here and say, that was the best experience I have ever had. Wow. So you have like a six month plan for brows. Yeah, always. Always. I think six months is a really great place to go with your plan to say, okay, this is where I see potential. This is your growth pattern. You know, I, I love to have clients and this is not always the case, but I love to have them grow them out at least four weeks in advance yeah. to be able to see, okay, this is where we're growing in four weeks. You know, and a lot of clients are like, well, how often should I come back? Um, it, it's based on growth. You know, some, some clients I see every two weeks. Some clients I see every five, six weeks. So it's, it's different for everybody. And everybody's brow is so different. It's just, you know, to me, when I look at a brow and when I look at people, I look at bone structure. I don't look at like, okay, 
well, this is the trend and this is what's going on. It's about, this is who you are individually. You're original and let's keep it that way. Wow. So you were yeah. introduced to our magical little tin jar called Out. Yes. Oh, now. <laughs> love of my life. Next to my husband. <laughs> right, right. And you have been, um, expressed in our private group how much you love that product. And then when we launched yeah. our Ouch Bomb Oil recently, oh. You were the first one in line saying, when, is it, when can I get it? When can I get it? When can I get it? What does yes. Ouch Bomb do? I know what it does in your business, but what does it really do in your business besides our post wax? Because I think that's the one thing that Ouch Bomb has now become the staple for pretty much everyone who not only retails it, but they carry it, they use it, but it really is more than just a post wax product. But what did it do for you? Because I know you love it. <laughs> Absolutely. The question is, what didn't it do for me? Right. It's done so much. Um, you know, this has been, I think as waxers, as estheticians, we're always trying to find that one product, that one product that we just speak to and it speaks to us. And that's what Ouch Bomb does for me and my clients and my business. It is part of a system. And that's why I love your product so much because being part of a system, it's, it's that sturdiness to rely on. Um, you know, I actually use Ouch Bomb for a lot of different things. Um, you know, in my studio, I use it for pre and post wax. You know, I use it if someone comes into me, you know, maybe they've had some things burned off their hands, you know, they've been to the dermatologist. I say, I have a solution for that. Use Ouch Bomb. Um, my building manager, she's currently actually going through that. So she comes up to me today and she goes, look at my hands. And, you know, she's got her hands all full of Ouch Bomb and they've healed beautifully. Oh. Um, so it stretches so far, not just in the service. You know, I like to, in the service, I like to use it, you know, prepping the skin. We cleanse the skin with, you know, very simple uh, tea tree oil. We dilute it in distilled water. I don't like changing the pH balance of the skin when I wax mm -hmm. because that just opens up for a whole bag of worms. So um, we prep with that. And then I actually go in with the Ouch Balm, very light application. I do a nice massage on the brows, kind of gets them to feel a little bit more relaxed in the chair. Wow. And, and, and we also use it post wax. So when we're removing, again, we go in with a, you know, little effleurage massage and it helps them to relax and it helps them. It's almost like this guard comes down when you're touching the client, right? You're sharing energy. And so I like to use it for numerous reasons. And that's just in my studio alone. Um, I keep a stock at home. Um, <laughs> it's my go-to, you know, my, my biggest, uh, selling story on the ouch balm is we were having a family dinner and everyone was over and everyone was in the kitchen and, and I was cooking of course. And I go and I put my oven mitt on. Well, I put my hand in the oven and somehow the oven mitt had gotten wet and steam burn on a 425 degree oven. Oh no. And Yes, I dropped the pan. I started screaming. I mean, it it caught me by surprise, of course. Well, I thought, light bulb, ouch bomb. So I ran to my bathroom. I grabbed my ouch bomb. I never scarred. I never blistered. It never turned red. It was the most amazing process to watch it just completely heal. Um, you know, I did it twice a day, every day. Um, I always tell my clients, you know, sometimes we get in Colorado, sunburn, windburn, we all ski, you know, snowboard, we're active, we're outside, um, twice a day, every day, soak your skin, love your skin. So it does a lot for me. My, my daughter, she's three and a half and she started skiing and she gets little chap cheeks, you know, and, uh, you know, I, I go straight to the ouch balm. I put the ouch balm on. It's a protectant. It's occlusive. It is magic in a jar. I can't speak highly enough to it, you know. And and then you went and you used and, and launched the oil and you had to do that to me. You had to. Um, <laughs> the oil is, I can't, it is so dry here. It is. You were so saying dry. that. It's so funny because the Ouch Bomb oil, we have so many followers of Ouch Bomb. I mean, it's this year alone, it's blown up, especially since Kelly Baker took it and yes. took it global. 
fan and girl so, there too. <laughs> I had someone um, was like, so it's vegan because you took the beeswax out. Yeah, I guess it's vegan. I don't. I thought that's all what you eat, but okay. <laughs> it's vegan. Okay, it's vegan. But you had put a post on, and you were like, everybody needs this. Just mm -hmm. can I bathe in it? And yes. I was so funny. Like it was so much the bathing in oil. Yes, our dry skin people. Yes. Dana yes. gets it. She like completely understands it. Most people I don't do. really understand the oil. They don't understand the dryness means water is being wicked away. Like they don't understand Correct. if you have no moisture, it, it'll move. But you right. really got it. I mean, and you have well been selling phenomenally with it. But the way you really talk about it has been very interesting because most people would look at you and say, but you do brows. Like, yeah. why would you, you know, care about the rest of the skin? Right. Right. You know, and that's, there are people that, you know, may think that, but when, when you are working with clients so close up, you see everything. Yeah, you do. And, um, in Colorado, I see a lot of dry, flaky brows. Um, we are desert climate here. I mean, it is dry here inside the nostrils, your cuticles, everything is very dry here. Um, you know, when my parents come to visit, I run a humidifier in their room because they can't sleep because it's so dry. Um, and when you launched this oil, I was so excited. I thought, I'm going to, I'm going to buy one and, and let's see, you know, how this does. Well, you know, I should have known better. I should have just put a, a massive order in. Um, I fell in love with it. Um, I had a client, um, I, I shared this with you that she came in and her skin, you know, we'd been doing hydrofacials and her skin was glowy and it was beautiful. And, and, and I thought, you know, you're still a little dry. And I thought, light bulb, let's get some ouch bomb oil okay. on that skin. So I grabbed the ouch bomb oil. I massaged it. I gave her a light massage with it in the service, you know, and, uh, 30 minutes after she left my studio, she texted me and she goes, my skin already looks better with using this ouch bomb oil. I mean, 30 minutes after. Wow. See, now so, I didn't realize it was that dry. You had said it's dry. Yeah. You know me, I'm like, okay, well, you know, yeah. how, how, yeah. how dry is it? But I didn't realize, <laughs> well, and that's the thing about, um, especially you, because you're in elevation as well, right? Correct, yes. So you yep. have elevation yep. and you have the dry, which, Yep. And we have extreme temperatures, you know, we can go, um, from, you know, 70 one day to 30, the next, I mean, you're, we had one day where we, I think we were at 80 one day. And then the next day we had a blizzard, you know, so we have really extreme weather here. Um, so you have to really, when you have your client in your chair, it's not just about one service. Mm -hmm. It's about servicing your client. It's about what, what else could we speak on to make them leave here and go, wow, she really took care of me. And I didn't even ask for that. So I feel like Ouch Bomb has opened a different avenue for that. You know, going back to the Ouch Bomb in, in the container, um, another uh, use for it that I love. I'm a big Bobby Brown Foundation stick fan. But sometimes it looks a little dry here. So I mix a little bit of the Ouch Bomb in with my foundation stick and it gives me a dewy glow. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So there's many different ways to use it. You know, there's not just one. I've got clients who use it on cuticles, you name it. I mean, it is just a go-to. It is one of those things that it's in my travel bag. It's in my bathroom. It's here at my studio. If, <laughs> and if there's anything, you know, if I see someone that's got a scratch, I'm like, you need ouch bomb for that. <laughs> I absolutely, absolutely love it. Well, we're definitely yeah. going to keep this very um, short and we're going to go ahead and, and let you go because yeah. I know you have a very busy, busy business. And I love seeing it grow Thank and you. I share as much Thank as you. I can. I try to repost. Your brows are amazing. Um, there's Thank a, you. Here you had two little mini tutorials I snatched off of Instagram. One was a I'm, younger girl and then I was like, oh, there's lots of, you know, because I know when I see it, I'm like, yes. oh. And um, I love, love sharing latte. your work. 
I do. I love sharing your Thank work. Thank you. But please let everyone know your, all of your handles. I give everyone that opportunity yes. um, where they can find you on Instagram and on Facebook and follow you, especially if they're in. Now, where are you in Colorado? So I'm located in Broomfield, which is about 25 miles, probably northeast, or sorry, northwest of Denver. Oh. So we're a little bit closer to Boulder. Um, we're kind of right in between in a pocket in the suburbs. Oh, wow. So your handles yeah. on Instagram are? The Brow Bar LTD. And then Facebook is the Brow Bar LTD as well. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being on my show today. I appreciate you. And I can't wait for you to share this with everyone like we always do. But yes. I love your work. I love the fact that you really, you know, you posted in our waxing esthetician group and said, of a client who loved the brows, but you saw one hair out of place and you oh. like, should I call her to come back? Cause it's <laughs> crazy. And I'm like, oh my gosh, she is meticulous. I and am. I look at the picture and I'm like, yes. Every hair counts. Every hair. Yeah, you were serious. Like, and people see, <laughs> yeah, I was. Call her back. I'm like, oh. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Well, Thank you so much for having me. I really couldn't do it. I couldn't do the brows I do without the love of my latte yeah. and my ouch balm. So yeah. thank you for creating a product that really truly is nothing short of amazing. Thank you.